The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 12th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question but you can't pick up the phone, send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 103 and the SP's down five. Three tenths and one tenths. About three tenths of the upside for the NASDAQ, 41 points. One and a half percent down for the Russell, 26 points. 41 points the upside for the semis. That's a little over 1% move there. Tranny's off 148. Gold is off three bucks. Silver's down 20 cents. Light sweet crude is up a buck 14. Natural gas off a penny. 30 year treasury printed out at 112.22. That's off 22 ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got Broadcom, $27, 3%. Uh, KLA Corp out here is up about 5% or 22 bucks. Granger Worldwide, 3%, 21 bucks. Lamb Research, 21 bucks, 3%. Adobe, 3.5%, that's a $19 move. To the downside, Alpha Metallurgical Resources down 32 bucks, 12%. Shockwave Medical, 11 bucks, 5%. Restoration Hardware, 11 bucks, about 5%. Inspire Medical down 11 bucks, nearly, nearly a 7 point percent move. And Top Build is building to the bottom, down $10.5, that's a 4% move to the downside. So we got movers. And we've got shakers. But what we're going to begin with here is this move inside the U.S. dollar index. Now, I've got a 10-minute delay on this. It shows it being up 531 ticks as we speak right now. Trade out 106. 10. If we take a look at, there's a new profile inside the U.S. dollar index. It is attempting to form. We won't have confirmation until day's end. The bottom of that profile, you can just jot this down in your pad of paper, is 105.46. Center, 105.81. We're well above the center. That suggests run to the top, and that's at 106.87. If we do that, what's the U.S. dollar likely to do? Is it going to give the market conniptions? Well, if we take a look at the correlation chart, the correlation chart that will pull up right here is for a three-day period. Up at the top, you've got the ES mini. Below that, the US dollar index, and then below that, the correlation. Bars that are above zero tell us about a directional correlation, meaning they both move on a, over a three-day period in the same direction. The bars on the bottom tell us about an inverse relationship. We can see that it's probably 90% of the bars, 85 to 90% of the bars are below zero for their three-day average. So, one would assume that if, in fact, the uh, U.S. dollar index is going to move higher, that we should see the ES mini move lower. We know that the ES mini is up at the top of its daily profile. Of course, we'll take a look at that during the show as well. We know that about the ES mini. Let's take a look at the Goldilocks up here. So we'll just change. This is going to take a moment to calculate and, and replot itself. But we will get that same directional correlation with regard to gold and the U.S. dollar index. So we just simply want to go ahead and establish that. Here we can see that metals, it's the same three-day average, have got a stronger, much stronger correlation. 
in this case here, an inverse correlation than the S&P 500 does. That's important to be paying attention to because just simply because the U.S. dollar index is likely going to move higher does not mean that we should see the ES mini move lower. It's got a pretty decent uh, set of odds, but I'd have to say and take a look at Goldilocks here, we're more like 90 or 95 percent, whereas in the ES mini, we were more like about 80, 85 percent with regard to its correlations out there. So that's the first thing to establish. Why do we want to establish that? Well, because what we want to do next is try to understand what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index. And here's the interesting thing. You'll see that momentarily when we get over to those charts. And actually, the first chart that I'll put up, now this chart here, because I'm using the data feed that I have up right now, it's not, I'm not getting the live data feed for the U.S. dollar index. Um, that's okay. What I want to point out to you, what I want to show you, is that a TD9 count top is going to complete this week. TD9 count top will complete this week. That suggests that we have a top and that price should continue to move back. So now where I do have a live data feed is when we take a look at the three currency pairs or three of the five currency pairs that make up the entire index, the three most important, and that being the uh, euro, the uh, yen, and the Great British Pound. These three make up 83% of the total weighting out there. Now what I want you to pay attention to is the bottom row of charts out here. These are each the weekly. The TD9 count pattern that we saw inside the U.S. dollar index, well, guess what? You're going to complete a TD9 count bottom in the euro, a complete a TD9 count top inside the yen, complete a TD9 count top inside the Great British Pound. Now, the cool thing about that is that if we see closes below or above that TD9 count, it would be below for the euro, below for the Great British Pound. And right now, let me give you those numbers. In the case of the euro, the level to be watching come next week and beyond is 1.0448. If we see a close below that, the euro is basically toast. And toast will take it down to 97 cents out there. That would be its longer term target. In the case of the Japanese yen, when the Japanese yen is moving higher on this chart, the Japanese yen is getting weaker. That means that the U.S. dollar index would get stronger. So the number to be watching at this age now, its pattern completes this week. I'm going to give you the high from last week, but we still have tomorrow. It is possible that the yen could take out that high. That would be then the new number. But right now, uh, the number is 150.16. If price begins trading above that, that's uh, with the caveat being we need to still see tomorrow's close. And let's assume that it's underneath that level. If we begin seeing price trade above that, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside or a strong weakening for the yen that would put more momentum inside the U.S. dollar index for it to get stronger. In the case of the Great British Pound, price is going to form a TD9 count, complete a TD9 count bottom pattern right at its breakout level of support, which is at 1.201. Now, that becomes a support level. I'll give you the number on the uh, weekly Great British Pound, which is at 1.203. But we want the real proof here. And that real proof would be a close below 1.201. If, in fact, the pound does that, the pound will get weaker, the U.S. dollar index will get stronger. But on a weekly basis, and this is what I want you to understand here, and this is really important, because these, again, these three currency pairs represent 83% of the total. So you're going to want to watch uh, each of them. But right now, on a weekly basis, also we've got on the day, on the weekly basis for the U.S. dollar index, we should see a pretty significant top inside the U.S. dollar index. And that takes us back to that daily profile that's attempting to form out there. I believe I gave you those numbers. I know I gave you those numbers out there. Um, so we'll want to watch uh, price, how it reacts there. Does price take out 107.05? If it does that, it tells you you're off to the races to the upside. And that should put pressure on metals and likely the equity markets. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So the uh, tool, the chart that we have up on our screen right now, this is the S&P 500. This is over the last 95 years out here. And what we're looking at is, since this is a pre-election year, we're looking at the pre-election year cycle that's out here. Now, that red vertical line, that tells us where we're at today. And the rest is just simply the average of each of those years that are checked up there. Um, so we got that four year, uh, a, another four-year cycle, if you will. So the question is, has the market been following along on this cycle? Is this the pattern that's in play here? Because if this is the pattern that's in play, this is suggesting that the rally stops right around now and we continue to move lower into November. So you don't see the cycles. Um, you don't see that chart? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. McGuppy, appreciate that. Thought we had it. Now you're going to see it here momentarily. So sorry about that, folks. But now we've got the proper screen up. So here is the 95-year cycle. This is for the S&P 500. Each of these boxes that are checked are the pre-election years. So that comes with that. That generates a four-year cycle for us. Again, that red vertical line where we're at today. So the question I pose is, is it possible that the market is following along with this cycle out here? If we take a look at this cycle, what we see out here is we see a top right around the July 11th, July 12th time frame out here. Well, let's go take a look at what took place inside the S&P 500. Here, I show that the top came in July 27th versus July 21st out there. Um, so I, I think when I use my, you know, I was just using my, my cursor out there, I showed when I really did the detail work out there that it was July 27th so when we got the top versus July 21st first out here then that showed us moving down into the august 18th area um uh but where versus august 9th so we use these dates as um as guidelines uh the march 13th bottom that came in out here with regard to the s p 500 that lined up exactly with that uh um uh, uh, uh presidential year seasonal cycle 
out here. And with regard to its high that usually comes towards the end of January, early February, uh, that came on 2.2 versus 2.16. So what does this now tell us? This tells us that the next low that we should see out here in the market should be around October the 18th, about a week from now. So we take a look at what's going on inside the U.S. dollar index and the components there, the interaction that it has with regard to the markets. Okay, that's plausible. That should then lead to a little bit of a rally. Uh, just a few day rally into the uh, um, last week of October. Let's call it October 23rd. And then markets should move down all the way to November 22nd. So here is the actual S&P 500 for the uh, presidential, uh, pre-presidential uh, cycle out here. Here is that chart identifying those highs and lows out there. Is this a cycle? I don't know. Is another possible cycle. We could just take a look at a 25-year period of time. Again, we can take a look at the pre-election years. And if we take a look at those, this is another possible cycle out here. This shows us having the top right around today, moving lower into uh, next week, about a week from now, on October the uh, 19th out there. And then markets would presumably move higher into the end of October, setting up a sideways consolidation out there. Is that the pattern? I don't know. Or is the pattern here, it just simply is not paying attention to, can we help? Can I, I think I ran into this problem yesterday. Let me try this. Come on, get over the NASDAQ. There we go. Now let me get back the S&P 500 out here. I don't know why I have to do this. I did this yesterday. There we go. Now let's put in uh, where we're at today. Or is this the cycle? Now this is the traditional cycle. This is the annual cycle. This is a full 95 years worth of, well, I'm sorry, this is 10 years worth of data. Let me put up 95 years worth of data out here. So here's the 95 years worth of data. 95 years worth of data says that we typically get that bottom at the end of October. This is for the S&P 500, and then that really begins the Santa Claus rally out there. Look, if this is the cycle that it's uh, I, uh, that it's following along, this too suggests that we should see some kind of short-term top. So our analysis of what's going on inside the uh, U.S. dollar index, our analysis of understanding of what's taking place inside the equity futures markets here, with the ES Mini running right into the top of that daily profile, up at 44 16 50 being unable to take it out with the nq trading into the resistance zone and that resistance zone is of the um a bear structure daily profile between 15,298 and 15,509. The Dow running right into the top of its daily profile. The high today for the Dow has been 34,153. 34,166 is the top of that daily profile out there. And then you've got the Russell 2000, which is the weakest of the uh, four. So we're running up into this resistance. We know the spot volatilics is also testing that 50-day uh, exponential moving average area out here. It is trading below it right now. 1608 is the number to be watching at day's end. So is the market getting ready to top? Is it getting ready to top? And we see just simply the market move lower into the end of the year. Well, let's go take a look at the Magnificent 7, right? The NASDAQ is the one that has pulled us higher. What is the Magnificent 7 doing out here? So that's a great question. Of course, I think it's a great question because I asked it, but maybe you were asking it too. So to answer that question, what are the Magnificent 7 stocks doing? Well, it turns out that five, five you don't see the eight panel, you should see it now, McGuppy. Five of those, of those seven stocks will complete or have already completed a TD9 count top. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple is going to form bar number nine today. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow. Microsoft is going to complete bar number nine today. It completes that pattern tomorrow. Google will complete a TD9 count top today. It completes that pattern tomorrow. Amazon, a world of its own. It has a TD9 count bottom, price above profile, above uh, its oscillator change line. It wants to move higher. NVIDIA negated a TD9 count top. It too says it wants to move higher. Tesla has already completed the TD9 count top. That should take price back to its oscillator and change line. 259 and change is the uh, print. And if price gets below that, then we're looking to move back to 250.32 or 246.39. And if we take a look at Facebook, Meta out here, it's going to confirm a TD9 count top today. It'll complete that pattern tomorrow. We can see the Qs are only in bar number seven. But let's presume that this gets up to bar number eight. It spikes today's high, whatever today's high is. It, too, would likely form or complete a uh, TD9 count top. But five of the seven, of the magnificent seven, that is, are showing us topping patterns that either have completed, which is really for Tesla, 
or the other four will complete today, will confirm today and complete tomorrow. So I'd have to say the answer here is yes, we should see. Doesn't mean we will see, but we should see a further move lower inside the equity futures. And it should be led by the Magnificent Seven to the downside. So if you have ridden the NASDAQ to the upside, what Stevie suggests is to pay attention to these charts. Don't have to take any action per se. I would tighten up my stops. That's most certainly something that you would do. Uh, remember, these patterns can fail. They absolutely can fail out there. But right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to master the probability of what the market is communicating to you and I. And so at this stage of the game, it's saying prepare for a top. Now, if we just simply take a look at consecutive days higher, consecutive days lower, you know, we like to take a look at the dance steps of the market. Let's try to pull open that set of charts, at least for the cash indices. And here's, I'm just referring to the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. We can see that we've had four consecutive moves up inside the S&P 500. So a pullback for two or three days would be normal. Price target 43.12. And the NASDAQ 100, this could be day number five to the upside out there. That says prepare for a retracement. The Dow Jones was up for four days. The Russell was up for five. We want to watch that oscillator and change on the Russell 2000. You close below that. That says you head back to its lows. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, no answer, TFNN. Well, okay. So we've got a couple of requests out here. I'll definitely get to that, uh, John. Let me just go in order here. And uh, we've got some requests. And the first one coming from Not a Trader. And would like to know what the next level of support is for General Mills. Uh, Not a Trader is short. So the next level of support for General Mills is going to be 59.90. How do you like that? What's 59.90? Well, if you take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here, Not a Trader generates a road momentum indicator top. Uh, price is now below, well below its uh, bullish structured monthly profile out there. Its next level of support is 59.90. That can be a bottom. If it is going to be a bottom, you would typically see some type of bottom pattern on a weekly or a daily time frame. The weekly negated its TD9 count bottom, and it did negate it that last week. That suggests much lower price out there. Strong momentum move. Now, it also at 61.41 is a TD9 count breakout level of support. So watch that come tomorrow. You want to see price close below that. Even though it negated this TD9 count bottom, pulling back to a breakout level can be a support area. So I'm your short. I'd like to, for you, I'd like to see it close below 61.41. That gets us down to the next swing point, which is from September back in 2021. That's down at the 56.67 level. That's from the weekly time frame chart. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, the daily time frame chart says all you have to do is watch for a bullish reversal candle. If you get a bullish reversal candle, which you're not going to get today, well, I don't think you'll get that today, then um, uh, you would or could generate a road momentum indicator bottom. We don't have that pattern just yet. Everything here suggests to stay short. Still watch that breakout level on the weekly. And then, of course, the breakout level on the monthly at that 59.90 level. You wanted the next areas of support on the way down. You you got them. Hope that helps you out. Next request coming in from a Duncan Steve. And Duncan wants to take a look at Marvell. MRVL is a ticker symbol out here. Just looking for its short term direction. So when I take a look at, let's start here on the daily side. Let's start on the left hand side. What we know is that yesterday price closed above the top of its profile, closed above resistance. It's trading above it right now, it being 5506. So you close above that today, 5506 suggests higher price out there. Short term direction would be to the upside. On a weekly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count bottom. When you form a TD9 count bottom, price typically makes its way to its oscillator and change line. That's currently printing around 57 and change out there. That says it wants to move higher. Daily says direction is higher. Weekly says direction is higher. Monthly says might be higher, but I would really get on the higher bandwidth if you can close above its green oscillator and change line. That's at about 56.39. It won't be exactly at 56.39, but a price can close above that. That would then also suggest higher price. So right now, Daily, weekly, say higher. Let's take a look at our consecutive moves higher and lower out here, right? We're looking for some type of pattern. The pattern to the upside here in Marvell, we can see a six day move, a five day move, a four day move. On moves to the downside, they were three and four bar rallies out there. You're only in bar number three today. You've got a, a bottom. So this Marvell could easily go on to make four, five, six. Uh, trading consecutive sessions to the upside out here. So I don't see a reason that uh, that this su suggests that price won't move higher. In fact, I think just the opposite. The last uh, piece of evidence out here would come from that 30 minute time frame from Marvell. Let's see if we've got anything out here. The only thing we've got is we've got a wave seven top uh, that formed out here at 10 o'clock. This was uh, on, uh, the tw on the 11th yesterday. That's a real strong resistance level. So your resistance on a very short-term basis is up at 55.96. I don't have anything to suggest that it won't try to target that level out there. So, Duncan, Steve, I hope that helps out with regard to Marvell. Why we believe it's likely to move higher with the markets perhaps moving lower out there. That's the only word of caution that I would throw out there for you. So I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dizzle is short silver. Dizzle wants to know just how far can silver head. So let's go take a look at those charts out there. If you give me a moment, we'll get to the silver charts. High ho silver, that is. And I uh, just want to make sure there's no new profile. I'm going to look on another screen out here that would pick it up early, and there is not. So how low will this go? Your first downside price target on silver is 2178. Not to be exact, but to be exact, 2178. Now, that 2178 number, the 78 area, can change by a couple of pennies or two. That is the red oscillator and change line. 
the first level, and it's trading below it right now. And you're short silver. You'd really like to see silver close below that 20, uh, 2203 level. That was the top of that silver profile. If it closes over it, that could be trouble. Could be trouble. We know the uh, U.S. dollar index, it's on a roll. Looks like it wants to roll much higher than that. But watch 2170. Well, first watch the top of that profile, 2203. It closed below that, 2178. Does that mean that's where silver stops? No. If you get silver below that red oscillator and change line, then it's likely to head back to its bullish structured zone area between 2114 and 2144. Now, on a 30 minute time frame chart, and this is what you might want to watch out here, Dizzle, you have a TD9 count bottom pattern that has completed. What you should at least see now is you should see a rally inside of silver that would take it up to about the 2213 level. That on a 30 minute basis is its oscillator and change line. We know that number will change, but that is the price target area. Likewise, if you get a close below the low of that TD9 count pattern, and that low out there, so this is also something else for you to watch, that low is at 2191. If price can close below 2191, the 30 minute chart says strong momentum move to the downside. And that brings those other price targets into play, 2178 to be exact. So, Dizzle, did that answer the question that you were looking for? I hope so. But if not, let me know and we'll go ahead and get that info for you. The next question or request coming in from Joe. This is coming in by email. And Joe wanted to take a look at the GDX. And his question is buy, sell, or hold. So let's get to the GDX charts out here. And actually, let's do one other thing. Let's switch from these charts momentarily. And let's go take a look at a correlation chart. So we'll take a look at the correlation chart. Pull that up on our screen out here. And what we're looking at now is a correlation between the GDX and the U.S. dollar index. Because we've already established that so far, everything that we're looking at looks like the U.S. dollar index certainly wants to move higher. So the question is buy, sell, or hold out here. Well, if we take a look at that U.S. dollar index chart compared to the GDX, we see that it's probably about a 90 to 95 percent inverse relationship out there and again this is a three-day average now let's go take a look at charts for the gdx try to get a feel for what they are doing out here so here we take a look at those gdx charts what we don't see on a daily time frame is a topping signal what we see on the weekly time frame as we see price dealing with support, uh, resistance. A resistance happens to be the bottom of that profile. And that's at the 2784 level. You're at 2788 right now. So you want to watch that area. Price has made its way up towards its red oscillator and change line. That would have been the secondary level of potential resistance out here. So the GDX on a weekly basis says, hmm, something to think about. On the daily time frame, where would the GDX pull back? Now, I don't have a top out there, but if it's just pulling back in sympathy with the U.S. dollar index moving higher, so this wants to move lower, its next level of support on the way down would be between about 27.11 to 27.25. Your question is buy, sell, or hold out here. And that's a tough one. But that you, it depends where you got in on this trade and everything. But it does look to me like the GDX wants to move lower and most certainly wants to do that if the U.S. dollar index is going to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back. We're going to take a natural gas for John inside the Tigers. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, natural gas, uh, a cyclical cycle. This is a 32-year, year 32 years worth of uh, data out here. Uh, what this tells us about natural gas, if uh, price were following along an analog like this, it tells us the only successful month for trading natural gas is March and April. In fact, once we get into October, November, and December, it basically looks uh, pretty horrible with regard to natural gas. Now, we know that natural gas uh, seasonally over this uh, same 32-year period of time makes a bottom around July 21st out there. Uh, this year's bottom really came in at, at the uh, June time frame. So not too bad. You know, we didn't we haven't really moved a, a ton, but we did get a bottom uh, this year in uh, June of 2023 out there versus the seasonal cycle that uh, comes in around July the uh, 21st. That's good enough for my work out here. So this says that natural gas should form some type of short term top or the, 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 the next major top should come in by next week out there. So let's go take a look at the natural gas charts out here to see what they're doing. We're going to switch over to a different set of screens out here. And as we do that, uh, we'll see our eight panel set of charts here for natural gas. So we'll start with the monthly chart. The monthly chart out here shows us that bottom mic in the June of 2023. That actually was a buy the D point, bullish engulfing candle. Price just trading with inside its profile, finding resistance to the center. On a weekly basis, we've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom that was confirmed on June the 16th out there. Price consolidating with inside its profile. Strong resistance is at the 3.414 level. If price could close above that, Price would move up to 375. On the daily time frame, three dollars and 43 cents is the TD nine count breakdown level. It has tested and rejected that price three different times out here. So you can't bust them the upside to try to bust them the downside. Well, on a daily time frame, the bust them to the downside would be testing support. And support right now, John, remains at between 314 and 317. That is the bottom of a new daily profile that is attempting to form inside natural gas. We'll have the confirmation of that come tomorrow. This is a bearish structured profile. That says if price closed below 3.341, odds favor that bearish sellers will be able to push it down to the bottom of that profile, $3.14. Now, a 60-minute time frame chart formed a TD9 count bottom. Let's just simply open this up. So we got a nice bottom pattern that formed out here. That was at 8 o'clock this morning. And what did price do? We saw a nice little rally, 
But all that was was up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level at $3.39. Yes, intra-period. This is a 60-minute time frame chart. So intra-period during that hour, price certainly screamed above that level. But it's really about the close. It's really about the body of the candle, not the screaming memes, the upper and lower wick out there. That's just the emotional aspect that took place during the hour so resistance held 3.394 that's a level to watch if price can take that out that would suggest a rally likewise if price pulls back and closes below that td9 count bottom and that would be a 3.299 that most assuredly price of natural gas would run lower it would likely target that swing point from 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday that would be between the range of 3.225 and 3.276 so how do we summarize natural gas i think we summarize it like this we know that resistance is held up at 343 we know we're coming into a very unfavorable seasonal time frame out here uh, nonetheless let's just trade the patterns and right now, the pattern says watch price should it pull back where it should find support at about $3.14. So, John, I hope that that helped you out with regard to natural gas. If not, let me know specifically what you are looking for, and I'll be happy to get that. Now, my apologies. Somebody had written in, and I've now lost it. Oh, here it is. It's McGuppy. It's right there on this page about corn. Would you buy corn here? Daily appears to be at support to you. So let's close up these. Uh, well, first, let me do, uh, I'll, I'll come back to the uh, corny question out there uh, momentarily. Let me just write this down. Let's go in order here because we had uh, G Man inside the Tiger Den ask about Google. So let's pull up those uh, three time frame charts out here daily, weekly, and monthly. Let's go ahead and put Google. And I believe Google is going to complete. A TD nine count confirm a TD nine count top today in this daily time frame, and we'll complete that pattern tomorrow. So let's put in uh, Google, see where we're at uh, with regard to how it is trading out there, and uh, I'll just give you the rundown. I don't recall what your question was. I just wrote down Google for Gman so that I could get to it. So here's what we're looking at. Today is going to form bar number nine of a TD nine count. That says that this pattern completes. Uh, tomorrow. So we've got a TD9 count top that should form between today and tomorrow. What price should do in Google is price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. And that's pretty right now at about 138.72. That number will move lower should price move lower as well. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, what do we have out here? We don't have any kind of top whatsoever, which makes this kind of a cautious um, um, call on the daily TD9 count top. It has support about 137.07. But the monthly chart is going to form bar number eight. So on a longer term basis, Google says that a TD9 count top, monthly TD9 count top, could form between October and December of this year. By the way, the last significant top inside of Google was a monthly TD9 count top. The last significant bottom in Google was a TD9 count bottom. That says we should be pay, we should be paying attention. But both of those instances took place either on bar nine or the bar following bar nine. Right now we are only in bar number eight. Nonetheless, you should at least get a short term top in Google by tomorrow that should go ahead and pull back towards that 138.72 level out there. So G-Man, I hope that helped you out with regard to Google. Let's take a look at corn. Let me see if I can pull up my multi time frame charts here for corn. Now I may not have the correct month in here. We can change that, but let's pull up those charts and uh, see what uh, corn is doing and try to answer McGuppy's question is corn a buy here and corn has just been building a base moving sideways really for several months when I say several months going back to the August time frame out here so we do have the December contract so we've got the active contract now on a monthly basis corn has got a beautiful TD nine count bottom so you want to watch that low that low by the way is off the December contract 467.75. If price closes below that, then corn would want to make a move to 427.50. The weekly time frame chart has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that formed all the way back here with that bullish hammer candle. That was the week of August 18th. That low has been tested several times, but it is held out there. So the resistance level for corn here is 504.65. The counter trend move for corn. Where this if got a bounce where a counter trend rally would end, if that's all that it were, would be 518.55. And on the daily time frame chart out here, all you see is that sideways base that it has been building out here. Most likely, this is a base 
to move higher. I don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern out here, but it's a long base. This base can go on for quite some time. The question was, is corn a buy right now? Let me just draw in that uh, rectangular base out there. I'm sure everybody can see it out here. I don't know if it starts right there. It looks like, yeah, probably about right, right in there or so. So there's our base. And yeah, it won't let me... So you can see that sideways base. So where is it best to buy corn then if this is just a sideways base out here? Well, one spot could be right now. It could be that oscillator and change line, which price is testing. Bottom of the profile is 480.20. But since it's building this base out here, you'd like to do it at the bottom of that base. And that's all the way down at 467.75. I'd be patient, McGuffey. There's no reason to rush into corn at least not when we take a look at that daily chart out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dragonfly inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ticker symbol VFS. That is VinFast Auto. Says, uh, looks like its uh, base is forming here. 
I'll tell you one thing. VinFast Auto was very fast at taking people's money. Look at this stock chart. This thing, this is one of uh, Basil Chapman's Eiffel Towers. This thing comes public, it looks like, on August the 15th. It runs all the way up to $95. The actual high was 93 bucks, even Stephen. It even has Basil, one of Basil's round number highs. And since then, it has been trading lower out here. There's a lot of shareholders that are in pain out here. Even if this does start to move higher out there, there's going to be a lot of people just trying to get some of that money back. Is it building a base? I don't know. Is it got a bottoming pattern? Look, it's negated two or three, two different TD9 count bottoms already out there. It doesn't have a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal just yet. Me, I'd stay away from BFS out here. Doesn't look like a really fun party out there, but that's just Stevie. So let's try to uh, wrap up this show. We took a look at the U.S. dollar index. We took a look at uh, the components of it. The euro looks like it wants to continue to move lower. That puts strength inside the U.S. dollar index. The yen looks like it's trying to run higher. If it closes above that oscillator and change line, that's up at the uh, 149.77. That would say it definitely wants to run higher. The Great British Pound is moving lower. Each of those are going to put strength inside that U.S. dollar index. The question that was posed, or I posed myself, is what that? What does that U.S. dollar strengthen U.S. dollar index do to the NQ? We took a look at the Magnificent Seven. We saw five of seven of those are going to have TD9 count topping patterns. But to answer that question, it's about a 50-50 relationship between the direction of the NQ and the U.S. dollar index. This is looking in a three-day period of time, and this takes us back to the beginning of the year. It's about 50-50 as best I can tell. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Be safe out there. Take care.